we'll restring some guitars, we'll get them into the amp, do a little bit of playing, bed them in, and then we'll see how the gig goes tonight, guys. So stay tuned. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to slacken off the uh, the strings on the Les Paul. Well, it's handy, I find, to uh, to have one of these. Uh, I've had this. It must be about first. I can't. Don't know what I'm doing it. But I've had this about thirty years. This this boss thing. And if it speeds things up, then it's uh, well worth having. So we will get a couple of turns off the uh, off the tuners, the the machine heads. I slacken these off. Like I say, I'm working a little bit flat out today, guys. I've got loads of stuff to do. All right, let's get that off. So that's what happens when you talk and, uh, you know, as blokes, we can't multitask at all, really. Um, but anyway, so, yeah, this morning, it's it's a typical sort of rock and roll uh, lifestyle. Well, it's not really, because I spent uh, the morning uh, vacuuming, doing the housework. Still got to get out with the dog yet. I need to get certainly two guitars, uh, get the strings changed. So we'll just snip those off. Uh, the good thing about this this uh, Les Paul is uh, the actual stop bar tailpiece is it's not going to fall off because it's actually got grub screws on it connecting it to the actual guitar. So we take the tension off the strings. It's not going to drop and damage the guitar at all. And it's just a case of just pulling these off. So we'll take these out. Okie dokie, with those out. See how quick we can get a restring done. Uh, we'll, but before we do put a restring on it, uh, we'll make sure that the fretboard's nicely cleaned up. Uh, incidentally, th this Les Paul, it's got locking tuners, which is really, really good, uh, which is operated by a thumb wheel nut on the reverse side of the Grover machine heads. Uh, once you've got your strings in place, lock them up, which is good, and as long as you've got your nut lubed, uh, then the tuning stability Certainly with this Les Paul, with this uh, spec, is really, really reliable. Now in 2003, I bought the Les Paul Standard, and I have to say, it's probably one of the worst guitars I've ever had. And that was mainly down to um, the tuning instability, you know, traditional clues on tuners, uh, and the it was just hopeless at staying in tune. It, was all, it spent most of its time out of tune, and because of that, the guitar spent all of its time in its case and never came out. So we'll just get rid of those. And that guitar didn't last all that long as a guitar that I could comfortably go out and uh, perform with. Um, so that guitar was unreliable. Guys, if you've never done this before, if you've got a guitar with a nitro finish, which is all this paint job here, which is traditional, be very careful what you put on it. So I'm using Kaiser uh, polish, which is a wood polish for instruments. It's the KDS 500 and it's suitable for every guitar that has got a nitro finish. If you put normal sort of household polish on or something, uh, it, it doesn't matter if you've got a, poly, uh, a polyester finished guitar, but if you put on a nitro finished guitar, uh, you could have some major, major issues with your paintwork. Uh, for example, it might go milky color and you might have some problems in getting the finish back. I've heard stories of uh, guitar dealerships uh, having a bit of a nightmare with the guitar. They had a little bit of a, uh, a bit of a, a mind fart situation and it's all gone wrong. And it's like, geez, you know, it's always a good idea to check the condition of your frets uh, when you're doing all this kind of stuff and just give it a good sort of clean up and just see where you are. Cause I do a lot of string bending. So therefore, I can flatten off these strings sort of in no time. They're looking pretty good, those guys, actually. Just a bit on the headstock. So when my guitar's always been out of the case, and I think that's, in, that's also uh, quite an important thing, really, is that um, if your guitar's in the case, you probably, uh, I'm not sure whether the statistic's right or not, but there's a good chance, probably around about, say, 70% chance that you'll never play the guitar. If it's sat on a stand, where it's handy just to pick up for five minutes without the, without the aggro of going to find it and taking out the case, then if it is on the stand, you'll find that you will play that guitar a lot more. Mine are all hung on the wall now, 
Uh, but the downside to that is these tracks a little bit of dust and stuff, but I'm not really bothered about that. For me, these are not only uh, an item of pleasure, but they're also to be played. Uh, they're also to be gigs, so they're also like a tool, really. So that's that. We'll just give it a bit of a quick clean on the front and back. You can tell me more about our phones going on. That's the, the band talking away. Uh, about tonight's gig. Uh, Christy's just messaged to say she's printing off all the set lists. This Les Paul is the best Les Paul I've ever played this. And I've played some freaking horrors over the years. So this one is a keeper, without a doubt. It's not pampered. Uh, it is uh, what it is. It's got a killer tone. Uh, if you've not seen the previous issues of Gigs and Guitars, um, it's a 2012. Um, and it was bought from New Kings Road Vintage Guitar Emporium in London, uh, probably about two or three years ago. And it doesn't have the 2012 spec wiring in it anymore. Uh, it has 1950s uh, spec wiring. Let's have a look at the nut. With uh, bare knuckle capacitors. And I think it gives it a really good killer tone. Um, I'm using uh, 11s on here, guys, if you can see that. That's what I'm using at the minute. Uh, so I use 11 on my Les Pauls, all the short scale guitars that I've got, uh, including the Firebird. Um, but on Strats and stuff, I'm using 10s. So I think it's, for me personally, it's down to preference again, is that, for me personally, uh, I want a similar kind of feel between uh, all guitars, really. And I think having 11s on my Les Paul and uh, 10s uh, on my Strats is a good balance. Now I need to do the same with the Telecaster because I think it's come supplied with 9s. I might be wrong, but it feels like 9s at the minute. And it's really good that stop bar tailpiece. It doesn't fall off like a traditional uh, tailpiece. Let's we'll pop that through there. Pop that on. Just wind it back a touch. Just lock the back of the nut up. I'm that distracted with uh, talking to you guys. I've not put my fret board conditioner on. Now this little bottle of Gibson fret board conditioner, this must be about 20 years old. I've had this for years. It doesn't seem to run out. And that was, I think it's one pound 50. Uh, can you see that? I think that's one pound fifty or something in uh, uh, twenty years ago. And it still goes on. It's the Luthier's Choice Professional Quality by Gibson US, USA, and it's uh, Gibson fretboard conditioner. So I'm not adverse to get my finger stuck in. Pop that on there. And the thing with these oils is you can put tons on, but it's, there's no real benefit as long as you get some into the wood and just gently rub it in with the end of your finger. You're sort of there, really. Um, now, a tip that I was given by a dealer is, you, is in terms of lubing your, your, your nut at the top of the, uh, the neck there, is you can use uh, anything pretty much, well, not pretty much anything, but you can get this stuff by the guitar manufacturers. This is a hot tip. Just use a blob of three-in-one oil, just a very nice little drip, so just pop a little bit on there. And all you need is a blob. And like anything, just pop that back over there. Wipe off the excess, which is that. Phone's going off again. That'll be the band, that. What, what are you wearing tonight? Uh, <laughs> I think I'm going to put some clothes on tonight, I think, this time. Right, fretboard's done. Let's get this wound round. Pull that tight so it takes up the slack. Get that around there. Okay, we've got a couple of turns on there. I like a, a couple of turns, to be honest, particularly on the thinner strings. That's quite nice, nicely done that. There we go. Let's just take a Take a chunk off that. 
Okay, stick the A string on. So, if you've got any, any tips in relation to setting guitars up, guys, uh, leave me a note in the comments section below. Um, send me a message uh, on Instagram. How do you set your guitars up, guys? Do you guys actually set your guitars up before gigs, or do you just see how the strings are? Or, yeah, what, what's, what's your plan, or, or do you wing it? Uh, just let, let me know. It's, it's interesting to talk about these things, you know, because like I say, every day is a learning day. Right, that's locked in. We can trim that one off. Good thing about Les Pauls is um, they are really quick uh, for string changes. Really, really good. You're not mucking about with a trim. A quick hot tip to do with strats. Um, when I pulled out the, the strat out of the case before, you'll notice it's got a little bit of tape over where the tremolo, or the trem arm normally goes. It's to stop that little spring from falling out during transit. A lot of people sort of end up losing those springs, and I've got a load of them from Fender. Do you know, it's a stunning guitar, this. You can't be a gold top, I just love gold tops. But that's a, a preference kind of thing. I've actually been uh, considering recently dropping a gauge of strings, but what I have found is Billy Gibbons uses uh, seven gauge strings, uh, which I only found out uh, this last sort of few months. And I was actually thinking, is that a little bit of a trick? Is all this uh, stuff about thicker gauge strings giving you better tone? Is it actually, is it actually fact or fiction? Or is it again down to personal preference? Uh, I really don't know really. I like a little bit of a fight from my guitar when I'm string bending. Um, I like a little bit of resistance. And if it does give me a little bit of a, uh, a kick in the tone department, then that's what I'm really after, really. So we've got two left. Do you know, guitars always look great with fresh strings on, don't they? This time tomorrow, be as it was just now, it'd be grubby, black and horrible, full of sweat and crap. Anyway, so we've got this gig tonight. It's, it's a wedding, it's a good friend of ours called Paul. He's getting married to, uh, to Shelley. Um, and it's gonna be a good gig. Paul sings in a band called uh, The Deal. Um, so it's like a bit of a bandy kind of thing. So it should be a really good gig. Um, his family that should be going should like the Cooper Collective set. Uh, within the set there's gonna be tracks like The Chain um, and other really, really good stuff that people will know. And the stuff in there that other bands don't do really, which is, which, which is good. The fretboard oil at the minute is nicely soaking in. It's, it's like you just mopped the floor when you've done that and uh, you can see it drying and uh, get about another five, 10 minutes. That liberal amount of uh, fretboard conditioner that I've put into it has started to, uh, to be absorbed, which is, which is really, really good. So pop that in there. Guys, just one thing about the Les Paul. You've got a headstock that's raked backwards. It's not a natural line, uh, a linear, path for the strings to follow. Now, in addition to that, with the neck pulling the strings backwards as it passes over the nut, the strings are also splayed out to the right and left, depending on which tuners your strings are going to. So it's another further reason to lube your top nuts because as that string oscillates and vibrates, it's got to return back to its original resting position. And it can only do that with a sufficient amount of lube. Imagine that's the nut. Here we go. I'm trying to do this in reverse on the camera. So that's the nut. That's your string as you're playing it and it oscillates backwards and forwards. So if it starts off there and it goes backwards and forwards, it needs to end up back where it started from. One guitar restrung. I don't know if you can see that too well, but it's all been done. Just give that a little bit of a, a wipe off now. Wipe off the excess. And rather than boring you all to death by doing the fender, I'll do the fender now just off camera. And then we'll just give it a quick go through the amp and just bed these in. So that's it. Good thing about doing this, guys, it's also a check over the guitar to make sure there's no defects, there's no worries, there's nothing alarming about it. And so far at the minute, what a stunning instrument. Uh, well pleased with it. And tonight it's just going to be killer. The tone from this guitar is awesome. Right, okay, so uh, both guitars are now uh, restrung. Um, I've got the Fender, the black straps. This one's just been loosely tuned up, so the strings haven't been bedded in at all. 
So uh, I've got the tune and the pedal board just beneath me. So it's just a case of play the guitar, retune, play the guitar, retune. And that's it, it's all set up guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And the next edition is all about the gig. So we'll see you then. Thank you.